hi guys so i want to share a story with you that i read from this book which says words that move mountains e w k ron and don gossett this book was gifted to to us as a family when we lost our beautiful daughter makafri gao um, who was born on the 13th of September 2018 and died after three days and I hadn't had not really paid attention to the book but during this period in my life as God will have it um, I found interest in the book and as I keep reading there is this story that makes a lot of sense and that I feel that would bless a lot of people. So I would like to read it out and I hope that it blesses you as it has blessed me and increased my faith and given me that knowledge that the Lord listens to us and the Lord is ready to help us in our difficulties and in our walk with him he is ready to draw us to pull us up and bring us closer to himself because the lord loves us with all his heart because you are the apple of his eyes you are so precious to him that he could send his own son mm, i cannot send my son to die for anybody talk less a sinner like you and me god loves us so much therefore that blood that jesus shed on calvary should not be in vain so make sure that you are having a walk with jesus you are having that you are taking seriousness into your walk with jesus because his blood is worth it and walking with him there is so much benefit there is so much benefit if for nothing at all at least the peace of mind that you have in chaos in troubles is worth it try jesus genuinely try jesus and have peace so i'm just going to be reading it's quite lengthy be humble or you would tumble. In 1976, I was oppressed with a very painful headache from the top of my head to the back of my neck. The pain was nearly more than I could stand. I had received miraculous healing from both an enlarged heart and a cancerous growth. Wow. As a result of boldly speaking God's word, but though I spoke the healing word repeatedly, my headaches were unrelenting. Finally, I visited my family physician. He assured me that he could give me prescription that would take care of the headaches. He was sincerely mistaken. Weeks dragged by and the headaches remained my primary concern. Then we traveled overseas for ministry. I was going through the daily speaking assigning assignments, ministering mostly by root with the intense pain in my head. I could hardly concentrate on anything else. One day, a high school principal and his wife made my wife and me their special guest for a tour of the area and a nice lunch. However, the pain in my head was increasingly to such a level that I could barely endure the day's activities. After preaching that night, depression and self-pity hits me like a blast of dynamite. It happens to us most of the time, you know. I tumbled into bed with this morbid words. I don't want to live another day. I hope I will die in my sleep tonight. These pains are so miserable. I just can't stand them. 
my wife was not impressed by my negativity. After a fitful night, I awakened to discover my prayer had not been answered. I was still alive. I announced to my wife that I was going to the prayer closet in my friend's home and I wasn't going to come out until I heard from the Lord about my wretched condition. When I arrived at the prayer closet, I locked the door from the inside so no one could disturb me. The words of Psalm 34 verse 6 came forcefully to me. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I felt as if I was that desperate man as I stretched myself out on the carpet of that room. I cried out with tears, Lord, why has my healing not been manifested? I have confessed your healing word. I have praised your name and I have searched my heart. I have prayed. I have fasted. Why have I not received my healing? <laughs> that sounds like many of us. <laughs> the Holy Spirit responded to my request for him to search my heart and reveal the hindrance to my healing. He made known to me that I had a spirit of pride that was preventing the manifestation of healing for my excruciating headaches. Quickly, the scripture began to rise up in my spirit. Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. First Peter 5 verses 5 to 6. Serve the Lord with all humility. Acts 20 verse 19. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what thou the Lord requireth of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6 verse 9 The Holy Spirit spoke these words to my spirit. Anytime you are proud, the Lord must resist you. If your prayers are not answered, if your finances are not being provided, if you are not receiving your healing, you must examine your heart to see if you are permitting pride to prevent your request. A high price for a low living. Now, if you had asked me if I thought I was bound by an attitude of pride, I would have said no. The Lord showed me that it was not so much of an attitude of arrogance or egoism that I had. Rather, it was an attitude of self-sufficiency. My spirit was not one of dependence on him. When I realized that this attitude of pride was keeping God from healing me of the headaches, I cried out, what a high price for a low living. Forgive me, Lord. Lord, for having such a wrong spirit, never again do I want to possess this attitude of pride. Cleanse me, Lord, by your precious blood. God forgave me and cleansed me from that ugly spirit of pride. For the next 45 minutes, I bask in his presence, praising the Lord and confessing his healing word. As I continued to speak the word, I looked up and saw a man standing there. I quickly looked to see if the door was still locked. It was. The stranger moved slowly towards me as I lay on the floor. He reached down and laid his hand on my head. 
the sensation of his touch was like warm penetrating oil flowing into my head. All of the pain instantly left. The man stepped back, keeping his gaze on me. I wanted the stranger to identify himself, so I asked, Sir, are you the Apostle Paul? I have no explanation for why that question. I just knew I was part of something tremendously supernatural. The man replied, I am an angel of the Lord sent to minister to you who are a heir of salvation. That is exactly what Hebrew 1 verse 14 declares. After he spoke those words, the angel vanished from my sight. I never saw him again. I sat there simply amazed that an angel of the Lord had visited me. I was healed. Praise God. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, liking, commenting. I hope that this word that I shared with you will touch you where you need it most. The Lord bless you and keep you. Bye.